Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be all about SOC analysts and for anyone who is interested in the blue team. So first things first, I do want to kind of cover the basics of what an SOC analyst is and what they do. So starting off with an SOC, which is a security operations center, this is typically a location where the information security team of your company is monitoring and analyzing different alerts or incidents or anything else that comes up throughout the day that is related to cybersecurity. And the main job of the SOC team is essentially to look into any types of security requests or alerts that come in, be able to detect if they're false positives or if there's any action that needs to be taken by the team to alleviate or remediate any kinds of vulnerabilities or security events. So as an SOC analyst, you're typically monitoring a dashboard or multiple dashboards for different events, alerts, requests, or anything else that your company may want to review and analyze. But of course, there are other roles in the SOC, including SOC analysts, like incident responders, threat hunters, security engineers, as well as the SOC manager. So there are many different roles, although the SOC analyst is probably the one that many of you guys have heard of before, but SOC analysts can also be divided into different groups like level one, level two, and level three. And all of these different roles in the SOC typically work together on whatever security events that may come up and they all have their own sets of skills based on their ability to classify and analyze any alerts that come in, threat detection, finding vulnerabilities, or maintaining all of the SIEM or SOC software and products. And next, I do want to share a resource for anyone who is interested in joining an SOC or the blue team, and that is letsdefend.io who is sponsoring today's video. So Let's Defend the IO has everything you need to get started learning about SOCs and the defensive side of cybersecurity. Their platform is full of different trainings, starting from beginner to intermediate and advanced level. And not only do they have different training courses that teach you the foundations of SOC and the things that you'll be doing on a day-to-day -day basis, but they also have many different features on their website that really take you deep into the job of what you'll actually be doing in an SOC role. For example, they'll give you dashboards to review and monitor and follow different incidents or requests through, let you do your own analysis and research to see if a log or an alert is a potential security risk and basically just giving you all the hands-on training that you'll need to be successful in an SOC role. For example, you'll find everything on their website from monitoring to log management, case management, as well as even endpoint security, a mailbox that they provide you for you to review for different emails or look for phishing emails potentially, as well as threat intelligence. They also have a training page where you're able to review certain scenarios and then go into a live hands-on experience for you to get that real world experience that you really do need to get your foot in the door for many of these blue team roles. For example, in one of their hands-on trainings, your goal is to identify some malicious activity that is actively running in the system by conducting a memory analysis to check if some attacker is exfiltrating some kind of data from your system, then you should be able to find a process that they're using to do this. Within their hands-on practice section, you can actually go right into the test machine or box and be able to do your own hands-on analysis to complete this live training. And they have many, many different trainings on various different SOC scenarios and events that may happen in a real world scenario on the job, which is why Let's Defend IO has everything that you need to be able to feel confident in your skills as an SOC analyst or any other role that you're interested in within the SOC. And another awesome thing is that they actually have different playbooks that are essentially just guided instructions for anyone who may be new to the SOC environment. So if you're someone who is interested in becoming an SOC analyst or any other role on the blue team or the defensive side of cybersecurity, I would definitely recommend checking out Let's Defend IO. You can use my discount code on the screen for 5% off your first month. Thanks so much to Let's Defend IO for sponsoring and let's get back to the video. All right, the next thing I wanted to discuss are the skills and tools used by SOC analysts and what you may need to know before getting into the job. So because a lot of your job is essentially analyzing and reviewing different requests and things that come into the various different dashboards that you have, a lot of the skills you need on the job is really focused on problem solving and, and knowing how to prioritize which alerts that come in and which ones seem the most serious or potentially harmful to your organization. 
For example, you may get tens to hundreds of potential phishing emails sent to your inbox every single day from employees in your company or clients, vendors, or customers that are using your products. And then maybe one day you'll see an event in one of your logs that looks to be very high priority and isn't something that you see every day. Those are the things that you may be prioritizing over the you know hundreds of phishing emails that you likely will be getting every day. So the key is really being able to know what's most important as well as being able to understand the different SOC software and SIEM tools that your company is using. For example, you'll likely be using an SIEM solution which will aggregate different security events that happen throughout your company and then generate different alerts for SOC analysts to be able to then investigate. There are also SOAR tools, which are security orchestration and automation tools that can help SOC analysts save some time by identifying threats that traditional tools may not be able to look for. And then of course, having that knowledge around basic security tools, including firewalls, different IDSs or IPSs for intrusion detection and prevention, any vulnerability management tools, network traffic inspection tools, filtering and data loss prevention apps, as well as reporting and data analytics. Your company may also have a different forensics tools. If you don't have a specific digital forensics team, then you may also be the one doing some network or digital forensics whenever an event does happen in your organization's environment. Another important thing within the SOC is incident response, which it's probably one of the most important things that you'll be doing on the job. There's also many certifications on incident response that you can get even as a beginner, especially as someone who is new to SOC, you really do want to understand the whole incident response process because when it comes to security events, especially when you have other vendors or other third parties or other customers relying on your product, you wanna make sure you have the most well-documented, well-rounded incident response process so that if there is a security breach or a security event, then you have all the steps that you took down on paper so that if a client or if an audit especially asks you for what happened when you had an actual incident, then you can show them all this evidence that you did the right thing, that you were able to follow an official incident response process that is documented by the SOC, by your company, to basically prove that you're doing the right thing when it came to security breaches. And of course, a big part of incident response is being able to actually investigate different security events, as well as to contain and prevent them before they spread across your network to multiple different endpoints and trying to keep the impact as minimal as possible. For example, if the security issue is specifically on one employee's endpoint or one employee's machine, then you wanna be as quick as possible in quarantining that device so that it isn't able to connect or communicate with other devices on your company company's network or in your company's environment. And of course, a lot of this can happen in just a few minutes to a few hours. And this is why incident response and SOCs are so important because they really are the ones keeping the company safe from all the attackers, their actors, and nation states that could potentially be targeting you and your data. Something else that is really important for SOC analysts and anyone working in an SOC is disaster recovery and business continuity. So this is just a really fancy way of saying reducing downtime and making sure you can get back up as quickly as possible. Or what are the steps that you're going to take to bring the systems or your network back online when something really bad does happen. And one of the most important things is of course reducing downtime because let's face it, downtime costs a lot of money. If your clients aren't able to use your application, especially if you're an entity, for example, like a bank, and if your banking application is down for half an hour and you have millions of customers around the world that are unable to access their money within that half an hour time frame, the damages in that downtime can be in the millions. And it's not just the monetary losses that apply to your company, but also the reputational damage. Because if a customer thinks that they're unable to get to their money when they need it through your mobile application or your website, then they may lose that trust in your company and in your product and may potentially move to another bank. So that's why business continuity and being able to bounce back up after a failure or after an outage or after some kind of downtime is really important. And a lot of that goes back to SOCs because if a security event did take down the entire network, hopefully you have some kind of backup system that you'll roll over to, like backup web servers, backup hardware, and anything else that is needed to keep your applications up and running, at least for a little bit of time before you get your main system back. 
then that is going to be one of the most important aspects of your job in an SOC. And if there is a security breach, SOC analysts are also responsible for notifying the different stakeholders that may be involved and making sure all of the system redundancy or the backups are rolled over to successfully so that everything else is working in place. All right, the next thing on this list I've actually had some experience with and it's honestly not always a fun time and I know many of you guys already aren't very fond of this topic and that is audit and compliance. So I kind of touched on this a little bit in the beginning of this video, but a lot of what SOCs do, you need to be able to document and show proof that you did it for any audits or compliance things that come up in the future, because that's how you're going to prove that your organization is as secure as you think it is. Even though technically nothing is 100% secure, but keeping track of everything that you do as well as documentation is going to be very important in terms of that audit trail that you'll need for different compliance requirements and certifications that your company may try to get in the future. You may also be leading any internal audits that are happening in your company to be able to audit the products that your company has to meet any compliance requirements by your government, by your sector, or any other organization that is providing you any compliance requirements. And typically a lot of audits are around patching, identity and access control, data management, how your data is encrypted, the process around who has access to different information, around threats and security events, and depending on what sector that you're in, your company may be forced to be compliant with policies from the GDPR, PCI, SOX, and various other well-known ones across the world, internationally, as well as in your home country or province. So I actually previously made a video on SOC analysts, the intro, but this is sort of a part two from that video. But in that video, I did list the basics of what certifications that you might need as an SOC, as well as salary and everything like that. So I can link that video below if you guys want to check that out. But some popular certifications for SOC analysts, Cisco Certified Cyber Ops Associate, the EC Council Certified SOC Analyst, or the CSA certification, as well as the CompTIA Security Plus, which is one of my favorite certifications in cybersecurity. And I also made a video on how I passed the Security Plus, which I can link below as well. Okay, so the next thing I wanna discuss is whether or not you need coding for an SOC analyst role. So typically I would say that coding is definitely going to be a helpful skill to have if you're working in an SOC. It may be helpful when you're trying to analyze and review different threats that are coming into your company's environment or trying to reverse engineer some kind of malware or some kind of exploit that you found in your systems. But typically you won't be doing coding hands-on too much unless you're doing some kind of scripting for a specific alert or exploit that you're trying to look into. In which case I think Python and JavaScript are good languages to learn if you're someone who is interested in that scripting side of things. But for the most part, you won't need to have any hardcore coding skills, but I do think it would be helpful if you're able to at least read and understand code that someone else may have written or just basic scripting. All right, so that's it for this video. Let me know if you guys found it helpful and any skills that you might want to add to this list to become an SOC analyst or to join an SOC team. And be sure to check out letsdefend.io in the description below and let me know if you guys try it out, especially if you're someone who is interested in the blue team or the defensive side of security. That's it for this video. I hope you guys liked it. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and turn on post notifications. I post videos every Wednesdays and Sundays at 12 p.m. And hopefully I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.